time, before the beginning of time, I knew you before you came out of the womb and consecrated you and separated you as a prophet for the nation. God put you here today for great works. Amen. So let's close our eyes. Let's give the glory to God. And one of the things that we do, and I'm so honored because I didn't think I would be giving my testimony here. I came to see my son. <laughs> and just like you said, we joke about this, but it's a real thing. Because everywhere I go, they don't know who Milton is, but like, oh, you're Joshua's father. <laughs> I relegated myself to that. So let's just pray that uh, even today, that we're going to see mighty, mighty miracles. We're going to yes. see shift changes. Yes. Uh, we're going to see dreams and visions like never before, according to um, you know, Joel 2.28. And that you will be transported through the testimony to see what God is doing. I kind of, I, I, I decree established that you're not just going to hear it, you're going to be living testimonies wherever you go. One of the teachings that we do is on confession. I confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, and my body is healed. Uh, God will supply all my needs uh, according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But if you go to testimony, it's the most powerful work in the Bible and in our lives. Because what does it say in uh, Revelation 12, 11? We conquer Satan. We conquer. He's under our feet. We conquer Satan by the blood of the Lamb. The blood. One drop of the blood of Jesus destroys all of hell. But there's a time coming. And that blood of Jesus is in each and every one of you. You all have a testimony. Doesn't matter what you think about yourself. It doesn't have to be grandiose. It's the blood of Jesus that takes you through that. And conquers nations, brings uh, nations to their knees because our testimony is so powerful. Amen. So, Father, I infuse that today. I declare living testimony dreams that uh, when we leave this place, we're not going to be the same. Yeah. We're going to be blessed beyond what we can imagine. We're going to be blessed to be a shaper of nations, to bring the gospel, and that wherever we walk, the dead arise, blind will see, cripple will walk, and we don't even have to say a word. Salvation. Because this is your time, people. He's coming soon, and we need to prepare and glean of the harvest that's out there, the millions. I just got back from Nepal and, uh, last week from uh, South Africa, and we praise God that the nations are opening up again. Uh, God has given me the, just a blessing to be over 100 nations, and we're planning to do a nation a month this year. And I always say God's will, God's bill. And uh, we're just seeing people coming to the Lord, not even saying a word, just walking by, and they shake, and they say, what is it about you, each and every one of you? It's the power of God. Because he infused the blood of Jesus in you, that every artery, every vein, every capillary is filled with the blood of Jesus, that nothing, it has to, every demon has to bow down and confess that Jesus is Lord. I'm going to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big round of applause. You know. <laughs> well, I thank God for my testimony, you know, because um, 1986, I went to commit suicide, but God had another plan. How many know that God is in the planning stages? And he'll wreck our lives and turn everything around where we thought we were gone. And I had been raised in, in voodoo as a child. My parents were sent at East Mall, which is worship of the saints. Um, and uh, just horrible things that I went through. Uh, I joined the mafia at 15 years old. I had no family. I didn't even know what the mafia was. I was working in a mafia pizza place in New York. And uh, kind of strange because at midnight they closed down and all these black limousines would drive up, you know. And they would just tell me, uh, mind your own business. Don't be looking at what's going on. I said, yeah, well, to finally find out it was the mafia. <clears throat> and uh, it's just amazing how God protects you. You're looking for all this. I've been through four assassination attempts, uh, jail in Brazil, looking at 20 years in the Brazilian jungle, but God had a plan. And then, you know, uh, just four assassination attempts because of things that I was doing in the world, very corrupt. I was living in Holland and France. And uh, one time in France, uh, I don't know if you guys remember the jackal. Carlos Edis Ramirez Sanchez was one of the greatest hitmen in the world. He used to get a million dollars to hit people, uh, politicians. And uh, they surrounded his uh, hotel, which I was staying right across the street. And a friend of mine was transporting drugs at that time. I didn't know he had them. And
and I was wondering why all the gendarmes were across the street. He says, oh, I didn't tell you. I said, tell me what? He says, I got all these drugs on me that we just brought from Holland. I said, you got to be kidding me. We're going to jail in France, and uh, we're never going to get out. And come to find out that he had assassinated some policeman right across the street. And, uh, but it was God protecting us. You see how that works? Came out of seven different religions. I was a Buddhist. I was a Hindu. I was a Muslim in Saudi Arabia seeking God and never finding them. People tell me, oh, you need Jesus. I said, you're crazy. Well, now I'm crazy. Something happened, you know. And, uh, but just awesome. I always say when you got Hinduism, Buddhism, altruism, you know, whatever it is, when the Holy Spirit comes, the isms turns into wasms. They got it. Finished. It and then the Holy Spirit comes in and changes your whole life. Yeah. Well, in 1986, um, I had a radical change. Uh, I had been through so much, so much sin. Uh, my life was a wreck. I was a cruise ship pilot and captain, flew planes, did everything. Uh, but I wasn't happy. I was empty. I would go in the bathroom, look in the mirror, and my face would disappear. I used to run the drug factory, and sadly being, I was using drugs to the max. And I thought I was losing my mind. I was going through one of those uh, Twilight Zone moments, you know, and demons would appear, they're real, you know. And I was consecrated to Satan at the time, I heard his voice very well, and uh, God is good. Yeah. God is good, let me tell you, I, I just thank God so much, um, it's just amazing. Sometimes there's no words that we can say how good God is to each and every one of us. To be absent from the body, we can be present with him. Forever. To be absent from the body at that time, I would have been in hell for an eternity. And I've seen hell, I've heard people screaming. You don't want to go there. That's why we're not at full gospel to win the world for Jesus. Amen. So in 1986, I was at the School of Marine Engineering and Navigation in Navy of Florida. I was getting my uh, shipboard pilot, which is uh, license, is the highest license in the Virgin Marine. And I was just a mess. Didn't believe in God. And Womanizing, I was living my previous marriage in the world, seven women around the world, but I, I was just sad, sad what I was doing, I had to repent for that, so, uh, you know, and, and life just caught up on me, and this is why we've got to pray for people, because a lot of times we see the essence of salvation, but we don't see the essence of what the person is going through, Yes. so we have to pray for these suicides to stop, these mass killings, God put a stop to this, put the blood of Jesus on any, uh, you know, adversity, conspiracy that's coming up, and we can block it. We're the ones that need to pray this in. So in 1986, I went to commit suicide. I just finished my studies, and I was going back home, and I was so devastated that I didn't want to live anymore. I said, that's it. You know, I, I fulfilled uh, the calling of my life, which I thought was, you know, godly, because I was deceived. I served the other God. And when I went to commit suicide, I always say God's got a sense of humor. How many of you know that God's got a sense of humor? That's why he uses us. That's why he's brought us here. You know, he's a joyful God. And um, the funny thing was that when I went to kill myself, uh, I wanted to get the cartoon chest. I was looking for the cartoon chest. Because I said if I die, commit suicide, and uh, they see me in the casket, He's got his purpley whites. He's smiling. He went to hell, but he went happy. <laughs> and you see, God had a plan. He's always got a plan. That's why he's chosen us before the beginning of time. He's marked each and every one of you for great things. You've been chosen for such a time as this. And I looked at the TV. I tried to get the cartoon channel. And I got a preacher called Nicky Cruz. Yeah. I didn't know Nicky Cruz. <laughs> So I looked at Nick, he points his finger and says, God's calling you. I'm freaking out. I'm trying to, I couldn't even get my suicide back. And I look at the TV and he points his finger and says, you, God's calling you. And I said, oh my God. Change the channel 84 times every time. He's making groups. And I finally challenged God. I said, God, if you're real, is it Allah, is it Buddha, is it the Andrew Maroni, is it Hindi, Shiva? Who is it? And Jesus spoke to me and said, it's me. And I asked him into my heart. And the same day, I ran out to Fort Lauderdale and to the beaches. 
to preach to everybody that Jesus was real. Amen. And I was rough because I came out of the mafia. I would kick them out of their blankets and say, Except Jesus. And she got away from that. You're crazy. Well, I'm crazy for God. So God gave me an instant revelation there to show me who he was. And through this, uh, we've been serving the Lord for uh, 36 years now. And uh, I promised God I would never get married again because I had gone through my divorce before my salvation. And I told the Lord I wanted to be like uh, uh, Paul. He spoke to me all of this. He's going to be like Peter. I said, Lord, you didn't hear what I was saying. I said, Paul. And God said, Peter. And I said, God, why are you saying this? And I looked at the Bible and I found out that Peter had a love for love. So, <laughs> oh, okay. I thought they gave me 10 minutes. But anyway, real quick, I want to thank you for having us here, for having Joshua. I'm so proud of him. Because at five years old, he started preaching, reading the Bible, Greek and Hebrew. I thought he was a little bit off, but God knows what he's doing. So tonight, we're going to hear a great testimony of what God has done in this young man's life, Christine. And uh, I'm just so proud, my God, I'm so proud. I didn't expect him to come here, but to be with my son, yeah. to see what God is doing, an exemplary example of the youth of Christ in this moment. Amen. So God bless you guys. Amen. Thank you,